What a nice little waterhole, huh? Actually, it's a river, I think. Good morning, what's up, guys? We're at Boona Mundak Hut. It's the second last hut to Albany. I just got up. It was a good sleep last night, a little bit cold, but I'll tell you about it later. We just got some breakfast on. I'm gonna eat, and then I'll show you guys around the hut. So, classic, just cooked up some oats. I'm gonna eat these with some sugar. I just did a gear check video, so make sure you check that out later. I went through everything fairly detailed. So yeah, you've obviously got the outdoor area, which you've seen a little bit already, with the tables, picnic tables. There's one over there and another one over there. Then this is one of the larger huts, the double huts. Now, I think it's stainless steel as well, so don't expect to be using any magnetic hooks or anything here. Got the tent set up under here. And it looks like there's no like hooks or anything if you're gonna hook up like a bug net or anything. So you might need to bring something to do that. Maybe some cable ties, some duct tape or something like that. At the back here, there's a bit of a undercover area protected from the wind. A few benches, everything's pretty dusty here at uh, Bunamundak. Then out the back here, you've got the bike racks over there. Down that way is the camping area. And then there's a couple of water tanks as well. There's one water tank here. Right there. And there's one on the other side too. And then the bathroom is, well the bathroom, the drop toilet <laughs> is just down there. And there's toilet paper. Just got my tent fly hanging up, trying to dry all the condensation off it. It's been two days now. I'm worried it's gonna get moldy. Now during the bike packing video, I actually discovered a little problem. The rear cassette is hella loose. See that? So I can only guess that that nut that holds it on's come loose. I'm not sure why. I really don't want to, but I'm gonna to have to take the wheel off, I think. I don't think I can tighten it with it on there. It's unfortunate, but I'm glad I did the video and discovered that anyway. So, you know those grunt straps I keep telling you are super handy and you gotta get some? Check it out, makeshift work stand here. Just uh, put a few of them together and pulled it right up. Hopefully it's high enough to get the wheel off. I think it should be. All right, let's do it. Well, we got the wheel off. So hopefully, maybe with the pliers or something, we can tighten that up a bit. That's the thing with bike touring and bike packing, especially when you're off-road like this, like, you never know what could happen, like, what a random thing to have happen. But the, you just can't have a tool to fix everything, or I mean, you could, but it's gonna be heavy. Hmm, let's see. I don't know if this is gonna work, guys. I mean, I guess we could tighten it by hand a little bit. Yeah, well, look at that, it's so loose. I hope it's not, like, stripped. So what I was, oops, what I was hoping is that, oh yeah, look at that. Would you believe it's like made to do that? They fit perfectly. Is that a joke? Guys, for real though. Let me see if I can, oops. I'm kind of holding the GoPro between my legs here. Sinking, yeah, look at that. I can even turn it into a more suitable tool. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, that worked. Mm. Thinking like that, sort of get it in there. That's what she said. Uh, okay. As if you need another reason to get these Gerber tools. This is just like, I think they call it their world's best seller or something. It's, you know, it's not like top of the line or anything. But look at that, it fits perfect. Okay, I wonder if that's something they actually thought about. So hopefully, hmm, the hub's a bit, how you going, see that, see that movement? Pretty sure that's in the hub now. Anyway, it doesn't matter, that's not the, it's not the cassette anymore, I'm sure. I'm sure that's the entire hub. I mean, you've got to keep in mind, I haven't serviced this bike and it's been through almost two Mundabitties now. 
And when I got it, I never gave it a full service. It was second hand. I would have thought it'd probably last a little longer, but who knows what it had already been through. We can put it back together. All fixed. Came together really well. Can't believe how well that tool fit. Problem solved. <laughs> Actually, I just remembered I wanted to tighten up these um, clipless pedals too. So I had all my stuff out here for a gear check video. Make sure you check it out. Helmet, bottle, sunscreen, you know, bike, GoPro gear, dry bags, tools, food, my electrical stuff, battery banks, straps, cable ties, locks, tools, all of it. So yeah, so make sure you check that out. Well, it's been a pretty productive morning. Fixed the bike, did a gear check vid, also did a tour of the hut. So make sure you check those out. So lunch is cooking. I gotta get some of my bike stuff packed away because we gotta get going soon. We're gonna smash this, chill for like a few moments and then head on to the next hut, which I will find the name for you soon. The Aboriginal names are kind of hard to remember. I do know it's about 53 kilometers though. So lunch is a bit of a weird mix. I got yesterday's bread still, chipotle sauce. One and a half cups uncooked of rice and the leftover salt and vinegar Pringles. Gonna enjoy this, chill out, watch some videos, and then pack the rest of the stuff up and we're gonna get on the road. Okay, it's finally time to get going. The next hut's 55 kilometers. Uh, Jing, Jinung, Bajabup, I think it is. We're at uh, Bunamondak. It's kind of hot. It's about 1.30. We're gonna get rolling. So we have the tarp on the front here strapped on with the grunt straps then behind it we have the tent strapped up onto the aero bars underneath we have the flip flops and they're also cable tied on then we have the sleeping stuff and some of the food in the front bag the back one's full of clothes the cooking pot the gas and some rubbish we've got that emergency stuff in here just like the phone and a battery pack and some other bits and pieces in here and pretty much everything else in this bag. I really like this hut, a bit of munduck. It's, uh, it's nice, bushy, sort of light forest. Just a nice change. I think we go this way. Oh shit. <laughs> Still in the highest gear from when I took the wheel off. Okay. Fuck. Come on, baby. <laughs> I also tightened the pedals up, so gotta test out those, see how tight they are. Probably should have done that while it was still up on the cord. So you'll enjoy some sandy climbs uh, out of that hut if you're heading south. But because there's been a bit of rain, it's not too soft. So that's a pretty big bonus. Whoa, that's some bridge. We go this way. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, this is a sick spot, guys. So this must be the little river crossing they were talking about. Oh wow, this is fantastic. You could camp out here for sure. This would be a sick spot. I'll show you guys a bit better. So check this out. What a nice little water hole, huh? Actually, it's a river, I think. But you could definitely set a tent up over there somewhere. No one would ever know. This is a great spot. So 
So I'm just here at Watershed Road. And it's a little bit vague where you're supposed to go. There is a sign. Looks like it would be a Mundabidi sign, but it's actually just for firewood. I just checked the GPX. You just keep going straight. So I just passed another road that didn't have any markers. So sometimes what I do is I just look to see if I can see mountain bike tracks and which direction they go in. So in this case, it was just straight on. And I'll just like trust that the last person was using their GPS and knew where they were going. Hey, it's worked so far. Looks like we were right about following mountain bike trails. Bikes next 11 kilometers were two and a half hours in, about 38 k's or so. So correct me if I'm wrong guys, but I think that that's Mount Lindsay. The map says it's 456 meters. We might be able to get another view of it further down the road. Check this out, kind of cool. This is an old school site. It says Group 101 State School, June 1926 to December 43. I guess this stone was erected by some of the students. I don't know if this, like, plaque, surely that wasn't all the students. There's, like, a handful on there and teachers as well. Isn't that crazy? There's nothing left here now at all. There's a fence. Off the corrugated roads. You wouldn't believe it. Loose. That's nah, okay. Oh wait, what? Did I mess up? Mm. Damn it. You think it's this way guys? Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. But I think maybe I missed a turn like immediately. Surely they wouldn't let it get this overgrown, although going by some of the other parts of the track, yeah they would. Wow, there's a kangaroo right in the middle of the track up there. Oh, it's gone. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that one. There was just a whole bunch of emus, but I was too slow. I saw one and then thought, oh, I missed it, and then another one, and then another one. But, I mean, we've seen emus anyway when we're in Donnelly River Mill. Fuck emus. Little pricks. If you've seen that vlog, you know why I feel that way. Another pretty cool view of the mountain and some other granite outcrops over there. This is such a great time to ride. It's kind of like riding early in the morning, except it's warmer. I'm just like not a fan of riding when it's cold, but to be fair, this time of year, you probably get warm in like five or 10 minutes anyway. So today's riding has been on a lot of corrugated roads with like the bumps. So if you guys don't actually know what that is, I'll show you here. It's not super pronounced here, but you kind of see it's like a hump and it goes down and up and down and up. Just imagine that and it just keeps going like that. I think it's from people driving too fast and so the suspension is like bouncing like this and it's just like creating that pattern. But luckily, We've got some sealed road to enjoy. Whoa. You guys saw that. <laughs> I seem to remember some climbing are coming up. So we're just making our way through some pretty nice single track, which I think means we're nearly at the hut. We're at 52.3. So I'm expecting the hut any moment now. So a few nice little downhill bits through there, through here actually, coming this way. Fifty-four point eight kilometers, three hours, fifty-three minutes. We made it. Hey, what a welcome sight. Hey. Hey, it's pretty cool, huh? This one's right in the bush, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a bloody journey up there, isn't it? Yeah. 
All right, guys, so we're at the hut. We're getting set up. I've got dinner cooking. Just got some rice on, as always. I'm starting to set my sleeping gear up. I've got all my stuff out on the bench here. Now i got to go get cleaned up. I usually like to get cleaned up first because now it's a bit colder. But I was just having a chat to the other guy that's here. Just learning about his day, how his ride went. Ah, there's mosquitoes attacking me like crazy. So I'm going to go get some pants on. That's like, I think it's like the best way to, you know, um, protect yourself from the mosquitoes is just like getting fully clothed. So we're going to do that. We're going to eat, set up and chill. Right guys, I'm just enjoying some rice in bread with some shapes as well. Got a bunch of rice here. I cooked about a cup and a half. I'm going to eat the rest of my leftover bread and some more shapes with it. Got Oreos if I need them for dessert. Got to get carved up for tomorrow. Right guys, that's another day done. Gonna have a good sleep here at Jinung Bejibap Hut. I think that's how you say it. Tomorrow, don't know exactly what the plan is, so make sure you stay tuned. We might go all the way to Albany. We might not. We might stealth camp along the way. We'll see how we feel. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment. And remember to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.